Today, I'm meeting with one of the few scientists to venture off this planet, veteran NASA astronaut Katie Coleman. I'm on a mission to learn about her journey to the stars. When you see those pictures of the Mercury 7, none of them look like me. And it wasn't until Dr. Sally Ride, who's the first American woman to go to space, she came to my school. And I remember being in the auditorium and just thinking, wow, maybe I could have that job. Katie, what was it like that day that you got the phone call? Here's this job that you think that no real person will get, let alone you. And then the phone rings, and it's this guy who's in charge of all the astronauts and all the pilots. And he just said, Katie, would you still like to come and work for us at NASA? I went to MIT, and for me, I only applied there because there were some guys in my physics class that were definitely going to go there, and it was very clear that it never occurred to them that I might. I used to worry that I didn't have good ideas. I'm not somebody that typically will, will think, let's design a ship like this and let's go, to, let's go to Pluto, let's go to Mars. That's not actually me. And I used to feel a little bit bad, like, oh, that must mean I'm not as smart. And then I realized that there's just different kinds of smart. It takes all of us to get there. For some people, it's about the ride up and the ride down. But for me, it's about the fact that, you know, we live on a planet, but this whole universe is ours. And when you live up in a spaceship and you're weightless, it suddenly lets you look at everything differently. And as a scientist, that's really valuable. How is code used on the space station? In the case of the robotic arm, I was in charge of capturing a supply ship that if I didn't do that successfully, we wouldn't have our experiments or our food or our water. And, you know, our space station is going around the Earth 17,500 miles an hour. And so is that supply ship, yeah. the same speed. It's like driving down a space highway together and I'm reaching out with that robotic arm to grab it. That's what coding does. It's the magic. It's the most exciting time imaginable in the space program. We're bringing experiments up there that we don't even know what is going to happen. And that's really the whole point, is to start discovering things that we don't know. Would there be any advice that you would have for those young girls? Doing it together, brainstorming, listening to each other, realizing that even if somebody looks different and even on the outside maybe doesn't seem like you're on the same team, you have to be on the same team. We're all from this planet, and it's all we've got. How do you explore space from Earth? I'm heading to meet Pautachi Valerino at the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California, to find out. Here at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, our specialty is to explore deep space with unmanned spacecraft. What does your work focus on specifically? I myself am a navigation engineer. We receive data that tells us where a spacecraft is located at any given time. Based on that information, my specific task is to determine how large a maneuver a spacecraft has to execute to get to the next point of a science observation. Are there a lot of ways that code comes into play here? We use a lot of programming tools or coding software to help manipulate algorithms and data to get a particular solution. One of the first missions that you got to work on when you joined NASA was the Cassini mission. Tell me a little bit about that. The Cassini mission is close to my heart. The Cassini mission is focused on understanding the Saturnian system. All we knew about Saturn was maybe that there was a largish moon that had this clouded atmosphere. Scientists wanted to understand the ring structure, Saturn itself, the weather, because we don't have unlimited amount of propellant. We did have to crash the spacecraft into Saturn. I think my saddest moment was knowing that that following Monday, I would go to work and not have any signals or information from Cassini. I love that it's called the center of the universe. Because all the data of the universe flows through here. What happens up in space has a massive impact on our lives here on Earth. Human exploration of space has only just begun.